welcome back, guys. We are back from a kind of extended hiatus that was unplanned. We meant to get this video done a lot earlier, and uh, this is funny thing. This is like the thirtieth time we recorded it. It just stuff just keeps happening. I don't know. This is a bit crazy. This is the the doomed video uh, of the Houdini rocket fuselage that just can't quite seem to happen. So. Anyway, hopefully this time is the time that it actually works, but we'll see, fingers crossed. All right, so we're in Houdini. We are going to create a rocket. We're gonna make some fins for the rocket. In another video, we're gonna make some windows for rocket. Uh, in another video, we're gonna put that thing in Substance Painter. We're gonna texture it. It's gonna look awesome. But first, we gotta create the fuselage. We gotta make the, the core, you know, the rocket part that looks like a rocket. So to do that, we're gonna start in Houdini. I'm gonna create a new project to uh, file, create a new project here in the dollar sign home Houdini projects. It's gonna put it into uh, the documents folder if you're on Windows, here in documents Houdini projects. And let's just call this rocket demo. And uh, just to be simple, I'm gonna leave all this stuff here that is gonna create all these different folders there. That's fine. Uh, I'm also going to create one extra folder, FBX. That's going to be where we put our uh, geometry that we're going to export to Substance Painter. So that is ready to go there. So accept. And now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and save as. And let's just jump up here. Make sure we're in the rocket demo. I'm just going to save this project so that we've, you know, we're here, we're ready to go. Everything is, is quick and easy and we can just hit control s to save it as we go so now how do we make this rocket so to start with and i, I don't want to make this too much about like interface and stuff uh so we'll just kind of quickly touch on things as we go uh but we need to make a geometry object by default here we're in the object area of our our editor and that's fine we're just going to hit tab to bring our, our creation menu up here and we want to create a geometry object so i'm just i'm just going to start typing what i want i'm going to do geo for geometry enter enter again to drop it down we can double click on its name here and we're going to call this rocket main uh, the way that i'm going to do it with this one because this is a pretty simple model there's not a whole lot of stuff going on i'm just going to keep everything in one kind of main file, then I'm going to output a high res and a low res from that that node. So there's a rocket main. I'm gonna double click to open this up. You can see now we're in object rocket main. We got our little breadcrumb thing going on there. If you wanna go back, you can hit U on the keyboard, we jump back up, or double click on it again to open it back up. Now we're in here. I'm gonna hit tab, create a curve. Press enter to drop it down. That's fine. We're gonna change this to NURBS for now, which is gonna give us nice kind of smooth curves. Uh, over here in our workspace, just a real quick refresher, if you're not familiar with working in Houdini, hold the Alt key to navigate. So Alt key and the left mouse button, click and drag, rotates middle mouse button like a mouse wheel. Uh, if you drag that, it's gonna pan. Right mouse, click and drag, is gonna zoom in and out like that. So we can zoom in or zoom out and get more detail and stuff. And that's, Pretty much it. If you don't have a three button mouse, if you're trying to do this with a trackpad, and I have seen people try to do this with a trackpad, you are gonna suffer. So if, you're, if you don't have a three button mouse, press pause, go out to the store, buy a three button mouse, they're not super expensive, come back, connect it, and then continue. Because without a three button mouse, this is gonna be really, really tough. It, it just, it's very, very difficult to work without a three button mouse in any kind of 3D application. Um, and now that we've done that and done our little refresher on navigating in 3D space, we're going to go into 2D space where it's much easier to navigate and easier to draw a curve. So uh, in 2D space, you can hold space where I'm press 2, gives you like a top-down view, press 3 is uh, front and back, 4 is side to side. Again, pressing or holding space where I'm pressing 4 or 3, like each time you press it, it switches. Like right now I'm switching between right and left, pressing 4. Or if I hold space where I press 3, I'm switching between front and back. We want to be in the front viewport here, so make sure that this says front. And I'm just going to zoom out quite a bit. We're going to kind of 
I'm going to holding the Alt key to kind of middle map, Alt key and middle mouse clicking and dragging to kind of get a little bit better view of this. We want to make this rocket about 10 units tall. And to start this, we just need to press the Enter key. So I'm going to hit Enter and start up here close to the 10, somewhere in there. I'm just going to hang this point over that center line a little bit. And then we're going to draw it on the right side. So we're dragging, we're drawing all of these points in positive x space. And you'll notice we've got a straight line now, but because we're working with CVs, as soon as I place this third point, it's going to make this nice curve that, that kind of averages out all three of those points. So I've done those. I'm going to come down in here and kind of get a little bit better detail in this. So we're going to bring this down to like there, I guess. And I'm going to bring another one right about there. Just like we did before, uh, it kind of averages those points out. So by placing these closer together, it's going to make the curve a little bit smaller. So we get this nice tight curve like that. And then the final line, final point, will just hang over the edge like that. So pretty easy. Now we want to end this and always pay attention to your blue text down here. The, the blue text kind of tells you what you can do. Left click to add points, hold shift and move off the construction plane or press enter to complete. So I'm going to press enter to complete this. And now that our blue text is telling us that, you know, what we can do to edit this at this point. So I can click on these points, I can move these around. So you can move it in X, I can move it in Y. I can also move it in X and Y by using this little square right here. So you can kind of move this around like that. You can also add points to this. So if I wanted to add a little bit more detail, for instance, so we get this little message down here, shift, click, on the curve to insert a point or outside to extend. So if I shift clicked out here somewhere, not on the curve, it's just gonna basically add another point from here connecting that. But what I wanna do is actually add just a little bit more detail to this curve here to kind of flatten out this bottom. So I've got this one selected already. I'm just gonna hold shift and click on that curve right about there. See that it's added additional points. So it didn't add it right where I clicked, but it added it in that kind of general area. So let's bring that one in a little bit and kind of bring that one in a little bit too, just to kind of, kind of smooth this, this guy out. So bring that up. There we go. Nice flat thing in the bottom. Nice round corner. Perfect. Did the same thing here at the top. You hold shift, click right there. So we get this extra point. I'm just going to drag this out. Oh, I don't want this to be super pointy at the top, so I'm going to kind of drag this out and let it get nice and curved there at the top. Perfect. So this is looking like a nice rockety kind of cigar shaped rocket thing here. Perfect. Okay. So let's turn this into polygons and then turn it into a 3D shape. So to turn it into polygons, I'm going to drop a convert node down. So with this selected in the tab, type in convert. Uh, this time I'm going to hold shift and press enter. What that's going to do is just automatically connect it for me. If you don't do that, it's, it won't necessarily be connected. All you have to do is click and drag from the output to the input to connect them. If you want to disconnect nodes, hold Y on the keyboard and then just drag it across. So holding the Y key will give you scissors like this and you can disconnect stuff and then just reconnect output to input, input to output, etc. Uh, however you want to connect those wires. All right, so there's a convert. A convert doesn't look like it's done anything. Now, make sure too, as you're going through these, that you change your display flag. Uh, this little blue guy right here, the eyeball, with this little flag right here, that's your display flag. So it's telling you that you're currently viewing that object. So there's a display. Template lets us view one thing while also viewing another thing and working on something else. Bypass lets us turn stuff on and off. Information gives us snazzy information about a node and then freeze basically just locks it so we can't do anything with it. So again, I just want to touch on this stuff as we go. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time covering interface stuff, but just kind of quickly touch it as we go. So we got our convert. What has it actually done though? It doesn't look like it's changed anything. I'm going to turn display points on. So in our viewport here, our options for our viewport are all along the side here. And I'm going to click this little display points thing. And we can see a bit of a difference. We've got a ton of points on this now. It, went, it wasn't that many points when we, we did, uh, and I've lost this. So another quick shortcut, if you hold spacebar and press H, it will jump back to your uh, network. But when I view this curve, there's only like a handful of points. So where did all this stuff come from? 
When we convert it from NURBS to polygons, essentially we're, we're changing the format of it. And with polygons, you basically just get straight lines. Each polygon is one straight line. And it has to be polygons in order to go into Substance Painter and to go into game engines. That's just how things work. Um, and in order to get all of that curvature, we end up having just more points. And we don't necessarily need all of them. Like having a lot around this curve, that's fine. But then we have all these extra points here. This is pretty much flat. We don't really need that detail there. So this isn't the most efficient way to do it. You can use the, the U slider here to kind of add detail or remove detail, but it's not doing it based on curvature. It's not doing it in like a really intelligent way. So if you want to kind of refine it a little bit, you can hit tab and we're going to bring up a refine node. And I'm just, this time I forgot to hold shift and I just hit enter. Now if you do that, you can just click the output of the last node and it'll automatically connect it for you. With this refine, we've got to, basically it's going to just kind of uh, reduce the amount of, of geometry in an intelligent way based on curvature. I'm just going to do it between two selectors, these little red dots here. So right now we've got a first view, I'm going to add a second view. So now we've got another red selector down here. And I'm just going to kind of space these apart. So I'm going to do the whole rocket. If you wanted to get fancy, you could have like multiple refine nodes where like one refines like this area and another refines this area and another refines this area. We're not going to do that. I'm just going to do real simple one refine node for the whole thing. And I did that in refine. I forgot we need to jump into unrefine instead of refine, but it, it kept our settings for me. So that's handy. And what we want to do is actually get rid of some of this geometry. It's already gotten rid of some of it just by jumping into unrefine here. Um, essentially, it's going to look at the curvature and it's going to say, do I need that extra geometry? Uh, no, it's pretty straight. I'm going to get rid of that. So the tolerance is how tolerant it will be to, um, well, <laughs> losing the original shape. We can increase the tolerance so it becomes very tolerant and is like, eh, it's a line. That's a rocket. Close enough. Uh, maybe a little bit too tolerant. So we're going to bring this back a little bit. And it's going to say, well, how about a diamond shape? Not quite there. So we, we're going to bring this back until we get nice curvature, but we don't end up with a ton of extra geometry that we don't need. So basically, you know, we want to keep this this nice round shape up here, that's good. We want to keep this nice round shape down here, that's good. But we don't need all the extra, you know, all this extra stuff in the middle. That's that's kind of unnecessary. All right, so we refined it, and now it's finally time to turn this thing into a 3D shape. So with that refine selected, I'm gonna uh, tab, hold sh hey, you hit tab, and then uh, type in revolve. So REVO and then Revolve is highlighted, press Enter, and drop it on our Refine there, Visible. And I've got a nice 3D shape. I'm going to jump back into our 3B, 3D perspective viewport, so I'm going to hold the spacebar, press 1, and look at that, look at that nice rocket shape. And the cool thing about this, because it is procedural, I can go back up to my curve and say, you know what, I'm not super happy about that. I'm, I'm looking to this, and I'm thinking this needs to come out more. And because it's procedural, we can do that. We're going to try to keep it as procedural as possible uh, all the way through. So the more procedural this is, the more we're going to be able to do with this, and the more quickly we're going to be able to make variations of this. So speeding up that pipeline, working um, uh, non-destructively as much as possible. Now, one thing that we're running into here, when we did this revolve, we're ending up with some a weird geometry. So this like weird shimmery stuff happening here. Uh, that's because this curve, if we jump back to the curve here, the curve is kind of hanging over this line a little bit. So there are two ways to fix this. One would be to snap it. So we could use our snap settings and kind of snap this last CV to the end here. That's not necessarily going to work and it just makes it a little bit more difficult to work with with our CVs. We want to try to keep these as smooth as possible and make this this part as easy as possible. So what I like to do is right after the convert, this, this won't work on a, a NURB subject, it needs to be done on uh, polygons, but we can select our convert, make it visible, and I'm going to drop what's called a clip node. So I'm going to hit tab, hit clip, 
Press enter. Make sure that we actually do it in the right view workspace here. Let me just drop this on the convert. So we've got our clip. Now my clip is already set to this default is like the x-axis. If you're using Houdini for the first time, you probably don't have your defaults changed. Uh, so yours probably looks something like this, where the default direction is the y-axis. So we've got a 1 and the y-axis. And if we click on our clip node here and hit enter, we can kind of see uh, what this is doing. But basically, the clip node right now is going in the positive y-axis. And that's not what we, what we want to do. We're going to clip this in the z-axis. So I'm or clip this rather in the x-axis. I'm going to make this positive 1 in x and 0 in the y and 0 in the z. What this is going to do is it's just going to clip off the ends of this this guy here. So we, let's jump back into a 3D space. So it's not hanging over. Remember when I had you draw that curve, it was hanging over a little bit. If we make this clip visible, actually jump back to the convert before the clip, you can see it was hanging over and the clip just kind of trims it off right there at that end. It's just a little bit more flexible, a little bit easier to work with than trying to, to snap these to that center line and use the magnetic stuff. That just, uh, you know, why do that when we can just clip it off and it works just fine. So clip it. And now let's go back to our 3D viewport here. Now we've gotten rid of the hole at the top and at the bottom, we've got just this one point right here. So everything now is kind of in the right space. It all snaps together perfectly. We don't end up with those weird shimmery areas where we've got polygons overlapping other polygons and we're good to go. So now let's go ahead and take this revolve Click on it, let's go into detail and increase the divisions to like 20, I don't know. Actually, let's do 18. 18 is probably good. Yep, 18 looks pretty good. So I just want to make sure that it's not too blocky uh, top and bottom like that. It's still a little blocky, but we can, we can work with that. I think that's fine for now. So next, we need to divide this up. We've got the shape of the, the rocket pretty well, but what we need to do is take this now and kind of make it look as if it's, it's actual you know, sheets of metal that have been bolted together. So we need to create kind of panel line divisions. To do that, I'm gonna use a Boolean. And we're just gonna drop this down and we're gonna quickly change that Boolean from intersect to uh, shatter. So shatter is gonna turn this into multiple pieces for us, which is, is fine. Uh, but we need it to have a cutter. With a, a boolean, we've got an A and a B. And that's essentially what this is. We're, we're either combining it or dividing it in a certain way. That's what a boolean does. So we need something to come into this this B that we're going to use as our cutter. So I'm going to create a circle. Drop this down. We want to make sure that our circle is a polygon, and we also want to make sure it's in the ZX plane, so it's nice and flat and horizontal like this. And I'm just going to hook this in to the boolean, just like that. All right, so let's drag the circle up a little bit so we can kind of see what this is doing. Hit enter with the circle selected and bring it up a little bit. And we can see that this is adding a line here, but it's not just a line that this is adding. If we actually zoom in all the way inside this, we can actually see that it's creating a floor here. Essentially, this is actually dividing this up into two pieces now. So we have a bottom piece and a top piece. Um, and we can get, you know, pretty fancy with this in terms of dividing this up in different ways. But um, for now, I'm just going to leave it with the one circle. We're going to jump back to the Boolean, and just to make sure we can kind of see how this is looking and how this is working as we add other things to it, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom here in these little output groups areas. Many nodes have an output groups area, and what groups are are selections, dynamically generated selections um, that let us kind of apply effects to things or make selections based on the node itself. So if you're working in Maya or you're familiar with like Blender or something, what you might do is like double click a line to get a whole loop selection and you would bevel that loop selection. With Houdini, what we can do is actually output a group from this Boolean. In this case, I'm gonna output AB seems the very last one. And I'm going to drop down a poly bevel 
node right there. And instead of double clicking or telling, you know, grabbing the different edges that I want, um, which then is, is non-procedural, non it's a destructive editing technique, uh, we're just going to tell it to use that AB seams. So up here under group, we're going to use the drop down until it use AB seams. Then I can just bevel that as much as I want. You can see it's only beveling that edge where the boolean took place there. We can actually see those seams. If we go into display uh, group and attribute list here, click on that, click this little gear here and go down to edges, we can actually see those AB seams. So those are the groups, that's the selection that it created. I'm going to create that group. Super handy stuff. Uh, groups are one of my favorite things about Houdini is it's just being able to, to create these selections as you go so that you can do all this stuff and just, you know, keep it completely flexible and non-destructive so that you can go back to earlier in the node and change anything you want and that doesn't mess up your, your model. So let's um, go back to our poly bevel here. Let's actually bring this down a little bit. If you want to get detailed with this in Houdini, if you middle mouse click, so again with that mouse wheel, middle mouse click, you can get kind of different um, amounts of detail here. So this is like really fast, hundreds or way too much, or you can get all the way, way down here to 0. 0.0001 and make tiny adjustments by middle mouse clicking and dragging that number. So super handy. Looks good. That's very helpful. And we're we're moving along here. So next, let's uh, let's move the circle back down a little bit. So click the circle. I still have the tool active. If you don't see this this tool where you can actually move this up and down, just make sure that this little guy is visible. The show handle tool. So let's move it down to. That's that's probably good there. You know what? Let's move it up. Like there. That's good. One thing that we can run into issues with, and the reason that I don't want to have too much geometry to start with, is that uh, if we we overlap this. We're going to run into weird issues. If we have geometry over top of geometry, it's going to start to get a little bit weird. So just be mindful of that. If you get weird geometry, make sure that it's not overlapping existing lines, and you should be good to go. So there's our circle. Let's make more of these. So I've got one division. That's fine, but we need more. So instead of like copying and pasting, we're just going to hit tab, do copy, and transform. Drop that on the line. I'm holding shift and clicking and dragging to move this whole stack around. Uh, just move this down. Let's, I'm gonna do four of these. So we're gonna end up with a total number of four. The way this works is that it transforms it a little bit. It makes a copy, it transforms it the same amount, it makes another copy, transforms it the same amount, etc. until you end up with a total number specified right here in the total number area. So how do we get this to work? Well, we just need to click this guy, hit enter, and drag this up. We can see how this is making those copies for us. We've got a total of four copies. Just gonna drag them up here until we've got four copies, dividing up our rocket in a nice way. And yes, I know, there's a problem. It's not making a division here. We've got points, where's our division? Well, the problem is that the circle just isn't quite big enough to kind of get outside of the, the fuselage. It's actually inside the fuselage, so it's not doing what we want exactly. To fix this, we need to dynamically change the size of the circle. And yes, we could just make the circle huge, but I want to make this all fancy and I want to make it procedural so that we can go back and dynamically change our curve and everything later. And I'm really sorry, but to do that, we have to write a little tiny, just in the radius, we need to pull some information from this revolve, this revolve node that we, we output to the Boolean. We need to pull some information from that. And we need to kind of call that over so that we can, we can dynamically change the size of the circle based on that. And actually, what I like to do, just so it's a little bit more flexible and we can add a subdivide if we need to later, is I'm gonna add a null right here. We're gonna call this the pre-bool. Pre-bool, so before the boolean, that's fine. Uh, that just lets us select this node right here and, and get its properties. Uh, you know, if we added a subdivide after the revolve, then, you know, it's gonna change in some way. So 
It's easier to go ahead and add just the null. It does not have any effect, and we can just kind of get its properties, the size of this, this null object, and add whatever we want above it. So with our circle, we're going to go into the radius, and the hidden kind of gem of Houdini is that you can type script into any of these windows, any one of these little boxes, you can add some script to it. What we're going to add is B box for bounding box. Every object has a box that kind of contains it, that defines its size and its dimensions and its place and its space, this invisible box. So B box, parentheses, and then in quotes, we're going to put that, that forward slash. Um, what that does, if you're used to web design, it, it tells it to go back a directory. In this case, it's telling it to go outside of the circle node and start looking at this, you know, everything inside of this geo, this geometry node that we've created. We see all these different things here. So some of the things we see, like the Boolean, we see that, the circle, we know that. Some of these other things, we don't actually see them. Um, what we're looking for, we're gonna go ahead and just type it in. We want this pre -bool. So that, that null object that we created, we're just gonna grab that. So I'm using an arrow key to hit down until it's selected and press enter, and then I'm going to end my quotes. We need a comma to tell it that we're done declaring which object to look at and that we're now going to be looking at the property. So the property we want for this is the X under, or sorry, the capital D underscore X size. And end it with a parenthesis. We can see the circle. The radius of this circle is as large as the largest diameter of the rocket. I'm going to go ahead and copy this whole thing here, this whole script. You just select it, hit Control C to copy, and we're going to go into the um, uh, Z axis here, Control V to paste it. And I'm just going to change this from D x size to d z size so now instead of being squished and kind of elliptical our circle is now perfectly circular based on the size of our rocket here so i'm perfectly dynamic and if i went back up here and i change even from the very beginning this this curve node here if i did something to this like i selected this guy right here let's go ahead and make our circle a template so we can see how big that is so if i went up here and move this out, we can see that now that circle is actually getting bigger with the rocket. Super handy. And yes, it's really, really huge compared to the size of the rocket because we are doing radius versus the diameter, or the, uh, the size of the bounding box, which is essentially the diameter. So the radius is twice the diameter. If you want to be really picky about it, you could go in here with a circle and you can divide it by two so you get the actual radius and then you can do it plus to make sure that it's always a little bit bigger, uh, point to one, like that. Like you can get fancy with it, but for us, for our purposes, we're just gonna leave it like that. So we're not gonna do all our math. Nobody likes math. That's not true. Lots of people like math. Um, but very rarely I found artists and creative people who would wanna use this kind of application and wanna do math. All right, we've got our script, we've got our dynamically size changing circle, we've got lots of copies, we've got a boolean, we've got a poly bevel, looking awesome, except we don't have any vertical lines. We've got horizontal lines, but where's, where's the vertical lines? These aren't panels, these are just bands. So we need to create some, some vertical lines. I'm gonna create a merge node here. Drop that merge node down, and I'm just gonna click and drag this line over to the merge node, so it's gonna kind of hook up my input and output for me, pretty handy. And let's uh, let's move that guy down, move that guy over. There we go, all right, so there's our merge. Merge is gonna put multiple things together for us. And what we want to add to this is a grid. I'm gonna hit tab, hit the grid, drop that down, and then hook that into our merge, very nice. The grid's not doing anything yet, that's okay. Let's go ahead and set this to the ZX point. No, on grid. Yeah, it should be on grid. No, we want to change this not to the ZX. We want to be on YZ. There we go. That looks horrible. It's broken a bunch of holes in our our beautiful rocket here. We're ruining it. That's okay. We're not 
We're not done with the grid yet. We'll go ahead and fix this. First, I'm going to change the rows and columns to two. So rows and columns, both of those are going to be set to two. You just want one big flat plane. And you can look at that and say, yes, that's that's uh, worse. And you're absolutely right, that is worse. But, again, we're not done yet. Part of the problem is that the geometry is overlapping in a weird way. This is kind of hanging out like down to the bottom here. It's not sure where to end it, where to start it. So we need to, to fix this up. And what we're going to be doing is basically making this grid the same height as this copy right here. So however many circles we've got, we want to make sure that the grid stretches from this top one to this bottom one and ends exactly where they end. So there's a couple things that need to happen there. First, we need our grid to be centered to that copy. So we need the grid to be exactly centered to where this copy is. I'm going to template the, the copy so we can see these, these circular lines here. I'm going to go into grid. Now, this is going to be changing uh, depending on how many circles we have, it's going to change in the y-axis. We want to change our center, x, y, z. We want to change it in the y-axis right here. So we're going to change this, and we're going to use center it. And I know exactly what you're thinking. You're going, how do I remember all this crap? This is way too much stuff. I'm never going to remember centroid. I'm never going to remember whatever the last thing was, is already gone. So what I recommend, what I do, is I keep Google Keep Notes. If you have Keep Notes, you can get it for iPhone or uh, for uh, Android, obviously, since it's a Google thing. But I just have a Keep Notes like full of scripts and random stuff that I've found uh, throughout tutorials and, and learning Houdini, Centroid, and there's tons of stuff in No. I don't remember all of it. I just make a note and then I, I have it there. I say, oh, that's handy. And then I write down what the script was. I copy and paste and give it a little description of, of what it actually did. And hint, 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 you should definitely put this kind of thing in your notes so that you can refer back to it later because you absolutely won't remember. I don't remember and you won't remember. So I guarantee it. Uh, Houdini does a great job of, of reminding you and saying like, oh, this is, you know, Centroid, Surface Tools, uh, or Surface Node type, you know, telling you the syntax and stuff and, and what you can do with it. Great. Uh, but, you know, just to, to remember what you can do, with stuff, it's great to have those notes there. So Centroid quotes, because we're typing in some, uh, like a string. Dot, dot forward slash, go up and out, centroid. We're looking for the centroid of this copy one, so we're going to start typing in copy. Get copy one, hit enter, it's highlighted uh, orange, and our quotes do a comma, capital D, underscore, just like last time. But this time, instead of typing like X size or Y size or something like that, for centroid, all we need is just Y. That's it. Just D underscore Y, and it, and a parentheses, and then click out of it. And after everything is written correctly, you have no syntax errors. You should get this right here. And we can see now if I like go into this copy one here. Let's uh, template the grid and make the the copy one visible here. We can see our grid outline. If I make this copy larger, I add more points to it we can see it's always keeping that grid centered with our copy one. So nice and handy. All right, let's bring this back down to four. Go back to our grid. Let's go ahead and have a look at the grid. Switch these around so we're templating the copy and viewing the grid. Actually, let's view the poly level here and, and uh, template the grid and all this good stuff. So the grid we also need to change its size dynamically. So we need to make sure that its height uh, stays the same as our circular area. So we can click here and drag. We can kind of see which point uh, or which axis is where. So if I drag it down like that, we can see that it's, it's changing actually the second number. So we're going to change the height. Uh, so that's the number that we want to change. And yes, I said this is always alphabetical before, and unfortunately this is not. We've actually got Z, Y, which doesn't make sense, but, you know, it's whatever. So now we don't, we know it doesn't make sense, and that's fine. But 
we're gonna be dynamically working with this so we will never have to see it again and we're good to go so size in the second box right here we're gonna type in a little script just like we did before we're gonna use the bounding box so b box b oops <laughs> if you can type b box parentheses quote stop at forward slash we know all of this stuff we're going to be experts at that part now uh, and we're going to be again looking for copy one and quotes comma capital D underscore this time we're going to use the capital Y size and end it in the parentheses there and now our grid is exactly the height of that copy one so now if I take this copy one let's go into copy one and maybe I bring this transform down a little bit and say I, I want less fewer divisions or I want less space between the divisions you do that and now you see this this line here uh, it's creating our vertical lines so that's exactly the same height so this is this is our dynamic procedural generation here it takes a little bit more time to set up but now it's very flexible because we can go back and tweak it very easily without having to worry about you know, messing with our, our geometry or doing anything with that. So, pretty cool. Next, we need to make this actually look like panels because two lines does not a panel make. It's not quite there. It's not quite enough. We're going to push it and make it even better. Yes, I know we're getting into complex stuff and it's going to get just, just a little bit more complicated before we're done. So we've got our grid. And we need to clip the grid so that we've got just half of it. We don't want the whole thing. We're going to clip it off so we end up with just one side of the grid. Our grid is actually going in the YZ plane, though, so we need to change our clip. Instead of X, change that to zero. We want it to go in positive Z here. There we go. So we're still using that horizontal, but we want to make sure to clip it off so it's, it's just going in the positive Z. Good. Yeah, I know. I say good. We're looking at this like horrible mess that we're creating here, but bear with me. We'll we'll fix it. Right, so there's our our clip, and now we want to rotate this. So we're going to do the same thing that we did with the circle. We're going to create a copy and transform. Drop it right there on our line, but instead of moving it up, we're going to rotate it around the y-axis. So we're going to rotate it around the center here. So with our copy active, I'm going to assume that we want three divisions. We want three kind of uh, panel lines here. We can have four, we can have five. And that's the beauty of this is once it's set up, we can have however many we want. We just need to change one slider, but we need to set that up first. So to do that, we want to take this number, however many divisions we've got, and we want to use that to affect the rotation. Right now the rotation is zero. We've got three divisions, but it's rotating zero, so they're all on top of each other. If I middle mouse click and drag that, now we see we've got these individual uh, vertical lines, but, you know, what do we do with that? Do I just like middle mouse drag that and every time I change it then I have to like eyeball it and make sure that that's I guess correct you know I could do the math myself and we're gonna end up with 120 but that's static what if I want four divisions right so now we end up with the problem we're not seeing those four divisions so that's where this comes in so we're gonna take this number we're gonna, we're gonna select this right click copy parameter and in the rotation area, we're going to select that and we are going to right click and instead of paste, we're going to do paste relative references. So it's basically just going to tell it to look for that channel, that channel NCY, which is the total number. And whatever this number is, it is going to pull that number. And it's going to put it into this rotation. We click out of it, it's going to rotate it by three degrees each time, which looks stupid. That's not what we want. What we want is to take the number of degrees in a circle and divide it by three so that they're evenly spaced. So how many degrees in a circle? 360. I absolutely failed algebra when I was in high school, but I can do this, and so I know you can as well. 360 divided by whatever this number happens to be. Perfect. 
So now this will always be nice and evenly spaced. Look at that, three panel lines, perfectly spaced around the sides of our rocket. That's, that's nice, that's handy. And you know what's even better? We take this little line, this little handle, and we drag it. Oh my god, look at that. We have lots of panel lines. And each one, now they're all, again, evenly spaced around a rocket. Now we've got a little bit of weird shading going on. And we've got some other weirdness. And there's one quick thing that I want to cover. If, for whatever reason, you've run into some issues after all this, and it's still giving you some some weird stuff where it's giving you like holes in the mesh and, and things like that. Most likely what's going on is that part of this is kind of overlapping some other existing stuff. So you just need to kind of move this around until it is no longer overlapping. Like if I move this up, see it's creating this weird, like, whoa, what is going on here? That's not what we want. So if I pick the circle here, we can move this up and down. We just want to avoid having it you know, in a place where it's going to create holes like that. Uh, we can also, kind of change the number of divisions. If we reduce the amount of geometry here in the revolver, less likely to run into an issue where it's it's overlapping existing geometry. So you, you might need to change the amount of geometry that you have going into it to kind of clean that up. All right, so caveats aside, let's go ahead and drop a null, or not a null, what am I saying? A normal. So normal, we're gonna be dropping a null as well. Normal, and what this is going to do is going to clean up our shading. We're getting some weird stuff here where it's like dark on the side and light on this side, but then light here. But this is dark. Why? It doesn't make sense. This view are normal. All right, so what this is going to do is going to help tell it you know, where stuff should exist. Let's turn off our groups as well, get rid of those little glowing borders here. So our normal is going to let us kind of tell it where it should smooth this stuff out. If you end up with weird shading like that, you probably need to bring the normal down just a little bit. There go. So now we get this nice curvature there. Uh, essentially with a normal, you can bring it all the way down. Everything is going to be faceted. Every single plane is going to be this like nice, perfectly flat plane, which is like, yes, great, this looks horrible. That looks not curved at all. Uh, but if we change this a little bit, it's going to increase this angle. It's going to smooth that out, make it look nice and clean, coming up a little bit more. If we end up too high though, then we end up with, yeah, this weird shading where it's like, why is this glowing when this part's in the dark? It makes no sense. All right, so let's bring that down. Until that is fixed, they're kind of in agreement. Perfect. There we go. That's pretty much it for the fuselage. All we need to do now is we need to... Oh my god, what did I press? I don't know, something. All right, hit tab, and we're gonna create a color. Drop that there. We're gonna be using color just as like a, a mask, like a way to tell Substance Painter, put this texture here, all the yellow stuff should have a certain texture, all the red stuff should have a different texture. So we're gonna put one color in this, we're gonna make it like teal. It's good. We're not actually gonna see the color, we're just using it in Substance Painter as like, a way to divide up materials. And then we're also going to add a null. This null is just a quick way to kind of grab, just like we used the null up here with the preble, it's just a quick way to, uh, you know, have a name that I can grab and send to uh, a, an object merge and take this out and put it into like a different geometry object or call it up somewhere else. So we're going to call this Fuselage, a fuselage high out. Okay, so we go. So that's our fuselage. That's uh, that's it. Wrapped up. Pretty easy. Pretty simple. Again, it is procedural, so we can go back to the curve. We can change attributes of the curve. We can go into our revolve and say, you know what? I want more detail on this. I want to increase this until. It causes me errors with my boolean, but looks like it actually didn't cause any errors. So we just got like really, really high uh, divisions here. We can also do cool things. We can add a subdivide here. When we get like really fancy, we can do like a subdivide. There we go, drop it down. Lots and lots of uh, divisions here. So, nice to, you know, 
because it is procedural, we can do all that. It's not going to change anything about the mesh. It's not like in Maya, if you go back previously to like an earlier node that you worked on and you change something, and you know, it's not, not going to mess stuff up uh, further down uh, in the flow of geometry because it's all procedural. We're just passing groups, doing a little bit of scripting. Yeah, I know there's a little bit of math in there. It's not too painful. It's just, you know, a little bit of math. And uh, yeah, so there's our fuselage. In the next video, We'll create some fins for this guy. In the video after that, some windows, and uh, in the video after that, yeah, we should should be able to, you know, create the low poly, high poly, export, substance painter. So it's been awesome. I will see you in the next video. If this has been helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that good stuff, so that I can keep making more bumbling videos about how to use Houdini.